He didn't notice, did you? <laughs> There's lots of purple in this Secret City mural because I like it so much. You have your own favorite color, too. I better know what it is. I bet it's red, isn't it? See an adventure. Today we're going to use one of my favorite drawings to illustrate the special art word variety. Now first we'll draw a TV set using a couple of the seven magic words, and then we'll add a newscaster, a very special Commander Mark newscaster. Later on we'll use the special art words and the seven magic words to add some flying animals to the underground of the Secret City mural. Meta Man's here today, and he's going to show us how to use some plastic compound to create animals and flowers and other objects. It looks like it'll be real fun. I know you want to become a member of the Secret City Club, and so Meta Man will tell you how easy it is to join. Now here's what you need to follow along. You ready? You need your drawing pad, your drawing pencil, make sure it's sharp, and your activity notebook to make notes on how to create plastic animals. Now, you gather those materials together, and I'll be right back. So you feel good today? You have your pencil sharp and you have your energy all revved up, right? Okay, loosen up, get all those kinks out of your hands, and let's command that piece of paper. Let's draw some three-dimensional drawings. We'll draw a TV set in 3D and a Unibear sitting there watching the TV set, all right? Get your pencil out, and we'll start uh, about the middle of our paper, and we'll draw a nice foreshortened square. Oh, about right here. Put two dots straight across from each other, about that size, and then take your finger, you know how to do this, right? Take your finger right in the middle. I have good aim, huh? I got it first try. Then put a dot above your finger and then a dot below your finger. Move your finger out of the way. Take your aim. I connect all the dots. Oop, I missed my planet there by accident. Got to make that line over again. See, I make some mistakes too sometimes. See, when you start drawing, sometimes you make a few mistakes, but that's okay. See, that's how you learn. You make some mistakes, and you keep bulldozing over your paper. You get more confident. You get more comfortable with your drawing, and your skill gets better and better. Your drawings will look better. Right off the bat, they can't be perfect instantaneously. You have to practice and learn these magic words and really get used to drawing across the paper. See, the middle line's longer, and these two lines were shorter, and then I connected the bottom. See? Okay, now that's our box. We'll turn this into a TV set. But let's put a fancy stand on here. Since we're using variety, I want to do something different, something special to the drawing. Come straight down right here. Come straight down right here. Now, when you add variety to a drawing, you try to add little special things to your drawing, little different things. Like for the TV set, instead of just having a box, I'll put a special kind of stand tapering down, maybe some ornaments or some something elaborate to the drawing, something different, using variety. Make it... A little more fun to draw. See, it's fun for you to draw, the artist, and it's also for the viewer or the audience who's looking at your picture. It makes it more interesting to look at. Put a dot right below the center here. I'm gonna really going to go all out for the stand. I'm going to make it really unique. Okay, take aim. Take your pencil and line it up with the bottom of the stand that you already have. See, that's a real boring stand. Well, watch this. We'll make it more exciting. Ready? Take aim. And then take aim here. Line it up with that line in direction seven. Ready? All right, turn the corner. I like all the sound effects. It makes it more fun for me to draw. Slant that down and slant this down. And the middle line is what? Middle line is shorter, right? Is it shorter? Shorter or longer? Longer, you're right. It's longer. A little bit longer because it's surface. Slant this up in direction one and in direction seven. You see we have an interesting stand there. Now you can keep building the TV stand if you want to to make it into an even taller uh, entertainment center for your own bedroom. But I think I'll just leave it a three-layer three layer stand like this, and I'll put a, the TV screen. Look, at I'm following the lines I've already drawn. I'm going to make it a square screen, kind of curved at the ends, though. Straight down here. I'm leaving room down here for the volume control and the knobs and the channel change and everything. All right, there's your screen, your TV screen. Now put a circle here for the knob and put some thickness on it. That's your volume, so you can turn it down when your parents get home. You have to turn the TV set down a little bit, don't you? And then... Here's the channel changer in case you get 
the idea you want to watch something else, you just change the channel right there. And then draw the dome on top of the TV. And then there's the antenna. And there's the antenna. And now let's add that special Commander Mark newscaster and we'll use variety. We'll do something different to the newscaster. We'll exaggerate something to make it a little more fun, a little more interesting to draw. Now here's the newscaster. There's his face, a nice round circle, and put a shirt on him. And using variety, I could just color this in black, right? Well, I think I'll use some lines here, some plaid and checkers to make it a little more interesting. <laughs> there you go, some variety on the design of the clothing. And then, well, you could put some glasses on if you want to. Right here. Oh, hello, Cindy. How are you today? You came down to help me draw, huh? Oh, Cindy, this is so sweet. You're awfully nice, you know that, don't you? <laughs> this is, you know what I'm going to do, Cindy? I'm going to put this right here on my easel so I can keep it forever, okay? I can keep it, right? Thank you. I'll put some water in it later so it'll survive. Well, I haven't put a nose on him yet. <laughs> you want me to put a nose? How, how big? <laughs> Are you serious? All right, you asked for it. You're serious now. Okay. <laughs> well, so using variety, we do something different, you see, to, to lighten the drawing up and make it more fun. Yeah, I mean, shading is next, so we're going to do that next, I promise. Okay. All the way down the left side. All the way down. Over here. And also on the left side of the stand. <laughs> now, Cindy, you know, anyone can learn how to draw, remember? Anyone can learn how to draw. You can learn how to draw, and you can learn how to draw, and, and all your friends can learn how to draw. Everybody can learn how to draw if you learn the magic words and these special art words, and you are real bold and confident with your pencil and just, just fly right across the piece of paper. <laughs> you got the right idea, Cindy. Just blast right across there. You're confident, too, huh? <laughs> Now look, we're putting it in this TV set in the corner of a room. So draw a line right here. See this line right here? And see this line? Bye, Cindy. See you later. Thanks for the flower. Slant this line in the same direction. And then look at this. The corner of the room comes from behind the TV set. Not to the corner here, but behind the TV set. I'm going to line these lines up. Okay. Oh, we have a bald newscaster. You have to have some hair, so I'll put some nice hair right here. While well, you're on the top. And then give him a big smile. He's having a real good day. It's good weather. Good news to report. He likes reporting good news. And then finish the glasses on him. The thickness on the glasses. And let's put a carpet here. And then we'll draw a unibear sitting on the carpet. There's a nice foreshortened circle. And the unibear will be sitting here. Here's the unibear's belly. And there's the unibear's head. Two circles. And then we'll make the unibear sitting here. So his the foreshortened circle. And there's the leg. He's sitting here in front of the TV set, so his arm, he's leaning back on his hand, so his arm tapers right here. There's the thumb, and then the, the furry hand. And there's his back. And his other hand's waving to the newscaster. See the thumb? His other hand's going, Hello, newscaster! <laughs> he doesn't know you can't talk to TV sets. And then curve the back right here. Or the TV set can't really hear you. I guess you can talk to it. And then we'll draw... The face on Unibear, there's a smile, and then the eye right here, and then the, the uni, Unibear horn, and the ear for Unibear, and the fur around the Unibear's face to make him really cute with the shading. And I'll let you finish this, and you can even draw a hole right here for a mouse to crawl out of if you want to. I'm going to challenge you to finish it all by yourself and add the shading to the walls, to the mouse hole, and also to the side of the Unibear. Draw, draw, draw. Practice your drawing every day. And the special art to keep in your mind is variety. Mark has received so much mail, it's impossible for him to answer everyone's letter. But he does open his mail and read every letter. So keep on writing to him. Speaking of letters, that's this week's club activity. 
to do your name in 3D. Just send your name in 3D to the commander and you become a member of the Secret City Club. Here's a really interesting idea of writing your name by Sharon Kim. Look how she designed her name. Very, very nice. Send your name to Secret City Club, Post Office Box 444, La Roca, California, 94556. Now, let's see. Do I have everything? I have my rolling pin, and I have my oil, and I have my cold water, and my spoon, and, and my hot water. Do you think I'm going to cook something? You're wrong. Today, I am going to be a sculptor, and I'm going to show you how you can be a sculptor, too. I am going to use some friendly plastic compound. This is a really interesting kind of material because it makes sculpting very, very easy. I'll show you how it works. Now, because this activity is a little bit more complicated than others that I've showed you, it's important that you have an older person helping you, like a mom or a dad or possibly an older brother or sister. Now, what I'm going to do is take some of these plastic pellets and I'm going to put them into boiling water. Now, they melt very, very quickly and at a very low temperature. And carefully going to put some hot water in here first. It's a glass container. And then I'm going to put some of my plastic pellets in and it will begin to melt. Now, it takes about 30 seconds for all of that to happen. And I help it along by moving the water over the pellets. Now, what's nice about this plastic compound is that after it melts and does melt very quickly, it cools very soon. And you can actually play with it without burning your fingers. Now, while that's cooling, what I'm going to do is put some vegetable oil over my workspace right here that way the plastic compound will not stick to my rolling pin or my tabletop okay I carefully put it right here it's not hot at all it's a little warm in about 10 more minutes after I've played with it you'll see how thick it becomes or how uh, solid it becomes it becomes very very hard now, what I've done is I've used too much oil here. That's why it's sticking onto the wooden tool I'm using, my rolling pin. I'm just going to show you a shape. I want to show you how flexible and easy it is to use this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and begin to just, oh, make a small little circle. I can just rip it apart here. And I'm going to make a flower. Now, you can make this as thick or as thickly as you want. Now, as I shape this, it begins to cool, and it stays in that shape. Now, what will help to uh, speed up this process is to put it into cold water. I have some cold water here. And you can see that it's beginning to look like a flower. Now, I think what I'll do here is I'll take another piece, and I'm going to just roll it with my hands and make the stem. Now, you can stick the stem to the flower part very, very easily by warming up the two ends that you want to stick. So I think my water should be hot enough. So I'll just put some more hot water in here. And I'm going to take this part and the part that I want to get warmed up, back of the flower, and put them together. And you'll see that they stick. Now, once this gets solid or uh, a little bit cooler, it will be one great piece and I can begin to paint it. I'll put this in the cold water to speed up that process and begin to paint my flower. Now, I think I'll use a uh, blue paint. This is water-based paint. 
begin to paint it's inside. If I could add more things to my flower, I could add leaves, of course, or I could put another flower on my stem. It's up to your own imagination. Now, let me show you some other things that I have here to show you the wonderful effects that you can get from this plastic compound. You could make masks. And what's nice about this mask is that it has sequins all over. I've glued sequins onto it. Hi, Madam. You're cooking something. Well, no, I'm, cooking I'm making sculptures. I have sculptures masked here. How do you make this out of boiling water? Well, you melt it, the plastic compound, and then shape it. And oh, the, more, the more that you do, the uh, better you become at it. Look at this mask, Commander. This is pretty neat. Yes. It's nice. Oh, you just put that on your chin and your mouth moves a little. Right. That's it's fantastic. Now, besides making masks, I have other kinds of things. I was showing our club members at home uh, how I was making a flower. Here's one that's been completed. Oh, that, okay. gee, I love my favorite color, purple. That's beautiful. beautiful. Right. I'm going to go take a look at some drawings. You keep on creating. And I also have uh, other examples of some larger objects here. Here's an, an elephant. Now, this has been painted. Here is a, an even larger elephant. This has been painted gray. Now, besides elephants and flowers, you could also do some very elaborate sculptures of children playing. Notice how much work and detail the hair and the arms and, and the uh, shirt here has some wrinkles in it. And you can always smooth uh, your, your sculpture out by warming up the uh, space that you need to uh, even out by water or maybe a, a hair dryer and smooth it with your, your fingers. It's fun sculpting. And all you need to do is just keep on practicing. And the more that you practice, the easier it becomes. I have some fantastic drawings to show you in the Secret City Gallery of some students who really practice these seven magic words. They draw all the time, and they sent me in some drawings. I'll take a look at this one right here. This is a beautiful Secret City by one of our club members. It has shading. It has surface and size. It's not a gorgeous drawing. Excellent work. Really a splendid use of the seven magic words, and also some of those art words like repetition and texture and variety. Beautiful drawing. Let's take a look at another club member's drawing. Now look at this. Tracy sent this one in, and she did a self-portrait, and she drew a TV set and a picture of her brother and her sister. <laughs> Don't you like these little drawings? Now, she's eight years old, and she sent in this really neat colored picture on... She didn't have any white paper, but that's okay. She drew on lined paper. How far have you gotten in your Secret City mural? You probably have a whole giant universe in front of you, like the Secret City moonscape and a space station and the underground and a planet. Well, today I'm going to finish up the Secret City mural underground by adding some flying creatures flying around the underground. I'm going to draw them right down here in the corner, flying over the verbal environment, the house right here the verbals live in, and also next to the verbal elevator right here. So I'll start right here by drawing a round circle. Now you have your paper with you, right, and your pencil, so you can sketch along with me. Take your pencil and draw the bird's head right there, and I'll sketch it in real loosely and draw that bean-shaped body, and then we'll draw the wing comes up, and you draw the thumb, and then you draw a bunch of fingers like feathers. And there you have one wing up in the air. Draw the other wing over here, draw a little thumb shape, and then draw almost like a hand, isn't it? The feathers coming down, so it looks like he's pointing across to where he's going. Draw the beak up in the sky right here. He's really in a good mood, so he has his mouth open. There's the eyes. And I'll go through and with my dark pen so you can see it a little more clearly. And then I'll draw one foot right here. And you know what? My underground birds right here, they wear tennis shoes all the time. <laughs> they always have these little cute sneakers on, drooping shoes. And there's his belly, and then there's his other knee and his other set of tennis shoes. And I'll go through with my pen and do it nice and dark. I'm going to use an even finer point pen than this. There we go. There's his eyes. And then he's looking up toward his friend up here. Here's the beak. Now, you see, sometimes I don't follow my lines exactly. I use them as a good guide point. And then there's his 
fur on top of his head, and then the wing comes down, and then there's this almost thumb-like feather, and then some wings falling down like that. And then we'll draw, I'm getting my red smeared around here, gotta be careful about that. And then we'll draw a other side of the wing, draw the thumb up here, and there's almost like the hand shape of the feathers falling down here. Now remember, your drawings might not be perfect when you first start, but the more you practice, the better your drawings will get. That's really important. Don't get discouraged if your drawings don't look absolutely fantastically perfect the first time you do it. It takes three or four or five or maybe even ten times, and then you'll be drawing beautiful, perfect drawings. Just take your time and practice and relax with your pencil, and your confidence will build up, and your drawings will get better and better every day, and the more you practice, and pretty soon you'll be so confident with your drawings, you'll be able to practice with your friends and draw and teach your friends how to draw these little underground creatures or the simple table or secret cities better yet. I think I'll add a little bit of color right here onto the bird's body some gray tone all the way up here and even on the leg over on this side. You know, here I am adding these flying animals to the underground. It makes me think about how many artists like to imagine and create their own special versions of the creature. Now take a look at this. visit your art museum or your library or you look at all those neat books you have on the shelves in your room for the pictures you get lots and lots of ideas for your own drawing that's called research I want to finish my little underground creature right here this cute little bird with the feathers and there's his leg and I'll leave the wings white and I'll color that in later a different tone or a different color make this wings a little bit darker now it's time for me to add one more creature up here I think I'll put a smaller bird back in the background I'm gonna sketch him in I'll make his wings coming in the, in front of him this time yeah, his wings going in front, and then there's his feet behind him, and his beaks out here in front like this, and there's his eyes. Now you can't really see it that clearly until I take my pen, and I sketch it in nice and dark. There's his eye, and then the bird's beak, and then his feathers on his head, and then one of the wings is coming right here in front. You see all the wings, the feathers here, and the other wing's coming up from the other side, you see all the feathers and the design and the texture of the wing going back into the background. Now, I'm using all magic words on the Secret City. I want to see if you can recognize what Elmo's magic word is today. It's very, very important your drawing it makes the near objects look closer to you. And that's what drawing in 3D is all about, is creating that illusion for your eye. I'm going to draw the back leg of the bird right here. His legs are up in the air. He's flying really fast. I'm <laughs> going across the paper. He's flapping his wings. There's some action lines and some action lines on this fellow over here. This fellow over here is called Herbie. And this is Johnny. And this is Betty back in the background. And there's the wings. Add a little bit of color, a little bit of gray tone to the body of the bird. You like the tennis shoes there? <laughs> I like adding little extras. That's a variety for you, isn't it? I mean, most birds don't have tennis shoes. They just have claws. But I used variety. Did something different to enhance my drawing a little bit. I think I'll draw one more bird flying over next to the, the furball elevator. There's the head, and then the wings, and then the legs back in the background. Kind of roughly sketch it in. And then I'll draw the face of the bird, and then the happy face, and then here's the wings coming across. He looks like he has glasses. Excuse me. I want to show you what a young artist has done. He's combined drawing with sculpting. 
This is amazing. This is really three-dimensional. Watch how I turn it. It actually comes out of the picture, doesn't it? Yes. Look at that. He's drawn the musician playing guitar, holding it, and half of it's on paper, and half of it is the sculpting compound that I was using before. This is incredible. This is a really good example of variety. You don't see very many pictures that actually are three-dimensional. They come out right out, out towards you. Look at the nice texture on the, the wall back here and the shading underneath. Mm -hmm. This is really a neat idea. Well, I thought that you would enjoy looking at that, so I wanted to show you. Think, you know what would be neat is if I take some of these underground creatures and have them flying right out in the background. Oh, that's Thanks really for showing exciting. me that, Metaman. Okay, bye-bye. Bye, Metaman. I'm going to draw the other feather up here. Now remember, anyone can learn how to draw, you just take